So we have our file ready in order to start our project. Um, I'm going to kind of walk through modeling this acorn because it does, it is going to touch on quite a few of the different Boolean operations that you guys will have available at your disposal in order to make your more complex forms using your primitive geometries. So we're going to start with this. Um, the first thing I want to do actually is change my document settings, my active units. So um, if you guys check out your handout, we are modeling a, our pendant or our game piece should be between 15 millimeters and 50 millimeters. Um, we are switching to metric system for this so that um, it's just easier to kind of make sure that we're working at our smaller scale rather than modeling something uh, kind of gigantic. Since we are doing jewelry size things, uh, jewelers do work in metric system. So let's drop down your document settings folder, um, click on this little notepad, and our toolbar will pop up over here where we can change from inches to millimeters. Select OK. Okay, so with our um, acorn, my base kind of shape with that is a sphere. So we are still working with our six primitive geometries. So you do have like a limited palette of um, forms that you can create. Um, so you do have to be a bit creative in thinking like what is kind of the base shape that I am should be starting with and, and altering in order to create my more complex form. So kind of the basis of an acorn shape is a sphere. So I'm going to start with my sphere and alter it to make my acorn shape. So select sphere. Um, when I'm modeling something that is uh, where I kind of need my parts to align more, like I'm modeling a specific object rather than just like randomly composing, I do want to focus on my origin point as much as possible. So I'm going to build my sphere based off my central origin and not just like up here, out here, somewhere in the nether sphere, right in the center. Um, I can pick whichever plane I want, my top, my right, my front, doesn't matter. But when I've selected my plane, I'm actually going to go ahead and um, flip my view cube so that I'm facing this plane straight on. I'm still viewing it right now at my three quarters view, which is once you have more objects, like once you've gotten a little bit into building your model, it can be very confusing. So I always, as soon as when I am placing and starting to build a new primitive, will like rotate fully to that, I'm viewing that plane straight on. So I can really see like where I am placing this. Um, so yeah, right now I have a sphere, it is 20 millimeters and that's probably good. I want my total to be um, 50 millimeters top. So we'll start here. I can always scale it up and make it a little bit bigger if I want to, but I the alterations I'm going to be doing will add some, some size to it. So we will start this. I do want to make sure I'm creating a new body right there in my operation. I'm going to hit OK. Um, so yeah, now I have a sphere which is not exactly the shape of an acorn. Um, I have a couple options here. So like, yeah, let's introduce our first um, Boolean operation, which will be split body. So in order to kind of change this, if you kind of notice an acorn is different shaped on the bottom than on the top. So I want to be able to change the sphere so I can change um, the alter the top separately from the bottom. So I want to cut this body in half. Um, so yeah, that's my first Boolean operation, split body right there. Um, one really nice thing about Fusion is that if you don't know what any of these tools actually do, just leave your mouse on them um, and a description will come up and as well as an illustration, so that's really helpful to kind of figure out what exactly these things even mean. <laughs> but split body is one of the main ones we're going to be using in order to like cut apart shapes and then um, be able to alter them kind of 
in sections, I guess. So split body. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to need to turn my origin point on. This is another reason I modeled directly in the center of my world, um, because I can use these planes as like cool tools with which to cut, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I have my um, split body menu has popped up and it whatever is highlighted in blue here is what it's asking you to do first. So the first thing it wants me to do is choose which body I want to split. So I want to split my sphere. And then I want to choose my splitting tool. So it, I actually can choose multiple bodies to split if I had multiple, but I only have one. I only want to do one. So I am going to now select my splitting tool. So I can cut my sphere in half using any of the planes from my origin. So I'm going to build from my, which way do I want to build from? My front facing view. Um, so I want to cut it in the middle using this plane in half. So that is my splitting tool. I will select that. Um, you should see it turn red like that. That means it is cutting. If you do not have like a red sphere like that, or a, it's not a sphere, but a red cutting plane, then something's wrong, but okay. Um, I might turn my origin off again. I frequently turn my origin on and off. Kind of it bugs me to see it, but it is a very useful tool to have. So um, now my bodies menu, if I go ahead and drop that down, I have this bottom half and I can hide it and top half. So I'm on my way to creating my acorn form. Um, so yeah, that was the split body. I can use that tool to cut any shapes in half. Um, it's a very, very useful tool. And next we're going to talk about um, scaling. So scale is going to allow me to um, kind of elongate this form so that it's no longer like a perfect sphere, but I can kind of like pull it down to make the bottom longer and skinnier and the top half a little bit shorter and fatter. So in my modify menu, I will choose scale. And it's first thing it's asking me which entity do I want to scale. I'm going to do the top half first. Um, it will be default set to a uniform scale, which means it's going to grow in all directions um, at the same rate, which will keep me at like a sp this perfect sphere, right? Which is not what I want. Um, so let's change it to non-uniform and now I have the option to kind of pull it in different directions at different rates. So for my top, I actually want it to get a little shorter and fatter. So it's still saying the same circumference right there around the middle, um, but I am just squishing down the top part. So I'm just going to kind of do that until, you know, whatever I think looks good. And I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to also scale my bottom half. down oh, to create more of my acorn form. Whoops, maybe I'll do a longer one this time. If I wanted to, I could also pull in another direction so I can make it longer and skinnier that way. Um, I have all three axes on which to scale it. Um, but I'm going to go back to one because I want to keep it um, perfectly round right there at the point where those two bodies meet. Hit OK. Okay, so now I have my kind of basic uh, acorn form here. Using scale and split body um, operations. Uh, and now I want to use my shell operation. So Right now these are solid objects and I want to go ahead and hollow them out on the inside. So this is not always necessary to do at this point 
in the process, but it is very helpful to have um, hollow objects, especially if you guys are thinking of maybe printing these in the future. The, if they are solid, they're going to be extremely heavy and more expensive because it requires more material. So whenever possible, I do kind of want to hollow this out. Um, also, acorn caps are hollow, so I want to go ahead and use my shell command. This is my shortcut right here, but also under the modify menu, I can choose shell. Um, it's asking me which face I want to shell out, and I want to shell out the inside, so I want to choose this face. And then I can kind of play with the thickness there, so how thick I want my wall to be. Um, I'm going to go with a millimeter. I wouldn't go too much smaller than that. Um, depending on what material you're going to be printing in, if, if you wanted to print them, um, there are like each material will have its own specific requirements for how thin a wall can be um, and a lot of other requirements. But um, we're going to go with one. One is a pretty thin wall, but doable, not too thin. Okay, uh, oh yeah, I also have the option to shell. Right now I'm shelling to the inside, so um, this outside edge is staying exactly the same and the inside's getting scooped out, but if I wanted to, like, uh, and actually I should be doing shelling to the outside because an acorn cap kind of fits over top of the bottom so it's a little bit larger so now the inside circumference whoops I turned the wrong one off <laughs> this inside circumference is staying the same and the thickness is getting added to the outside you can also do both if you want to you have multiple options depending on what exactly you're trying to accomplish um, I kind of want this, yeah, acorn cap to overhang the body like this. Um, and also, if I do it like this, I can have them printed separately and the lid, this cap become a functioning like lid. So the interior of my acorn could be kind of like a secret little vessel for holding, I don't know, whatever I wanted it to hold. Okay, so there's my basic acorn cap. I'm actually going to shell out the bottom one as well to lose some weight there so top i'm going to shell it to the inside one millimeter as well okay so now i have a little hollow shape with a hollow lid that's kind of my very basic acorn form right there um let's see what else can we talk about fill it so Another tool I have at my disposal is a fillet, which will basically round these edges right here. So if I wanted this to not have like quite a sharp corner right there, um, I'm going to use my fillet tool, which is this little guy right here, the shortcut, but also can find it under that menu. Um, and I want to Filleting only works like on an edge. So this counts as an edge, this counts as an edge. Um, it's just a singular line. Like I cannot select this whole body. Um, hmm. So the, my wall thickness is only a millimeter, so I can probably only fill it. There's like a half of a millimeter. So I got that a little bit rounded. Um, if I want to also do the inside, I can hit this little um, plus button and then select the inside. And that way I can fill it them separately if I wanted one to be more round than the other. But I'm going to do them the same. Both a half of a millimeter. Okay. So yeah, now I have a nice soft round edge. Um, which is less like sharp than this one. Um, yep. Filleting, oops, I don't want to show. Is a good way to make something a little bit more functional. Like a, an extremely sharp edge is not uh, 
very comfortable for jewelry. So filling, rounding your edges um, is nice for that. You can also, for a larger thing, fill it. Well, I'll show you that later. <laughs> okay, top and bottom with I'm actually not sure I like that filling, but we'll think about it. Um, one other thing I think I mentioned, but I'm not totally sure. If I wanted to change either one of these now that they are built, I can always edit a feature by going back in my timeline. So I say if I wanted my top my lid to have a, a little bit higher of a dome instead of to be so flat. Um, I can find that right here. There's my first scale. And if I right click on it, I can edit this feature. So it will un temporarily undo all of these other things that I've done. So don't like worry, freak out too much. As soon as I finish this and hit enter, um, it will repopulate all those other processes that I have completed. But I can change that and make it a little bit taller. Um, I froze. <laughs> okay. And hit OK. And there we go. A little bit taller of a lid, a little bit more domed, and it has re-completed all my other processes. So that is where I am right now with my acorn. We've shown you a split body, a scale, a shell, a fillet, um, a, let's do a draft. So in this guy, I have a little tiny point on the tip of my acorn, um, which I made using a cylinder that has been turned into a cone. So we'll kind of go ahead and make that as well. Um, turn those off for a minute, turn my origin back on. I am going to create a cylinder. I want to, when you start a cylinder, I'm sure you guys have noticed this by now, um, you are drawing the circular face and then extending it upwards or downwards. So where, whichever plane I'm choosing is where I want like the round part of my cylinder to go. Um, I want it to be a vertical uh, cylinder, so I'm going to choose my bottom facing plane right there. And I'm going to rotate so I'm looking straight down. Um, I want this to actually be... So yeah, again, I can drag if I want to, or I can just type in, like, I want a 10 millimeter. Um, a little 10 millimeter cylinder. So I can make it taller, smaller. Uh, I'm gonna have to kind of mess around with it. I'm not sure, I can't remember what I did the first time. But I'm creating a new body, hitting okay. Um, it is, oh, that's huge. <laughs> okay, let me, let's edit. Ooh. Maybe you want the diameter diameter to be three millimeters. That's probably better. And let's do three by three. Okay, a tiny little cylinder is hidden in there. Um, so I do want to go ahead and let's zoom in. Move this so that it is coming down here. Actually, let's go ahead and this is a good time where I should be labeling these bodies. Um, the more complex your thing gets, it's your, sorry, not your, your model gets, the better it is to have all of these labeled. So this is my bottom half acorn, acorn, acorn. This is my top half acorn. And this is my point, which is not currently a point. Okay, so I want to turn off both parts of my acorn and kind of alter this cylinder into a cone. Um, and I'm going to use that using, I'm going to do that using my draft operation. Okay, so um, 
if I hover over draft right here, um, it essentially allows me to change the angle of a certain plane. So I am going to want to choose the plane that I am like rotating my angle off of is going to be the surface right here. The face that I want to change is the body of my cylinder. So you can see I've created a bit of a cone and now I'm going to use my uh, rotation tool right here. So anytime I see this guy, I can turn and rotate my pieces and I'm going to kind of drag it to a point. There, I have a cone. Okay. And I would like to move this cone so that it is not like in the center of my of nothing, but is instead at the point of my acorn. Um, so my move copy menu, again, that is under, mm, where is it? Modify, right there. Um, hotkey M, that's what I normally do. Just hit the M on your keyboard, your move copy menu will come up. Um, I want to make sure I have body selected, which should be the default, and click on my cylinder. And I would like to move it straight down so that I have it sticking out of the bottom. I think I just want a tiny little bit. Make sure it's centered where I want it to be. And I'm going to hit OK. OK. So I'm happy with that for how it looks as the little point of my acorn. Um, however, I do not want this like the excess part of that. So if I look inside, I have still that whole top half of my cylinder and I want to get rid of that. I just want it to be a smooth like little cup inside of my acorn. Um, so I am going to use a new tool, which is my combine. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned that last time, but essentially this will, my combine tool will allow me to join bodies into one body, um, or I can, which I, what I'm going to be doing for this is I actually want to cut my little cone. Where are you? I want to cut this cone using my cup shape. Um, so that essentially just cuts my little cylinder or my cone right in half right there and I can get rid of that top excess part that is like in the interior of my acorn. Um, so the first thing it's asking me is my target body. So that is what thing do you want to change? I want to change my cone. So that is my target body. Now it is asking what is my tool body? So with what object am I going to change my cone? My acorn bottom. Um, right now my operation is set to join so that's going to change, it's going to merge them into one single body which is not what I want. I would like to cut. So you can see anytime I'm cutting I'm going to have red on my screen. So you can see it, the body of my acorn is going to cut my cone into two pieces. Um, which is exactly what I want. However, I also want to make sure I have this keep tools checked. Um, if I do not have the keep tools checked, it's going to get rid of my bottom, my whole bottom half of my acorn. It will get rid of the tool you use to cut. So if I keep my tools, hit OK, um, I still have my acorn right there. And now you can see I have my point has now split into two bodies. I have that top half of my point and the bottom half of my point. So I might change that just to excess point. So it's not the point margin. It's not the part I want, so I can kind of turn that off. Um, one important thing with fusion is that when I have excess geometry, like that top part of my cone, um, I am not going to delete it, which is kind of 
frustrating because you'll end up with a lot of bodies over here that you are just like aren't really using. Um, but if because I use this like um, in order like that is a uh, creation from this operation I just did. If I delete that, a lot of times it will affect the other objects as well. So I could create problems when, if I tried to delete that top part of my um, cone, create a lot of issues with um, in my timeline history down here. So instead of deleting, I just want to turn it off and ignore it. And it is very frustrating for those of us who like a clean folder list over here, um, but deleting creates issues. So just learn to ignore it. Okay, um, I probably also want to go ahead and combine. In general, it is helpful to combine as many objects as possible. Um, when I get this, or if I were to print this, I want to only send like one single body to the manufacturer. So instead of like sending all these bodies separately, I do want to combine them. So let's go ahead and combine my uh, bottom half of my acorn and my point. I'm going to change my operation to join. And I do not want to keep my tools this time. I want, because that would keep my point separate from my body, my acorn bottom. And I want to join them into one. So now you can see over here in my bodies folder, I have lost my singular point. I still have this excess point, but now the point is joined into the bottom half acorn body. Okay, those are the main things we are going to go over. Um, I also wanted to talk about um, creating a pattern, which is another way to create just a more complex geometry in Fusion, still using our primitive models. Um, but yeah, we'll just leave. Actually, let's do it. Okay. So in this acorn top over here, um, I used a pattern command to create all these little ridges right here. Um, I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it took a while. I don't want you guys to have to watch that. Um, but yeah, in order to create that, it's actually part of a torus, so essentially a little ring that's sticking up out of the surface of my cap. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the bottom half of my acorn so I really am just focusing on this top half. Um, and what I did is create a torus and um, I want it to be straight up and down so either this plane or this plane so I'm going to shift and rotate and make it about that size hmm. sure. new body um, I can change, if I wanted to, my inner diameter so that it's like a bit smaller. I can change my torus diameter, which is how like fat it is. So a little bit fatter if I wanted to. Let's, let's do up that one. Okay. Let's do up that one. Okay, so I want to move this now. So hit my M key for my move copy menu. Um, select my torus body and I kind of want to just move it up so that it barely sticks up out of the surface just creating that little like ridge bump like look um, if I wanted it to stick up less it does kind of snap right here so it's moving in half millimeter increments um, but again, I always have the option to type in my own if I just want it to barely yeah, come above the surface. So I'm going to hit OK. So there's one of my little ridges. And now we're going to go through um, creating a pattern. So. I'm going to go to my create menu and then choose pattern. 
of three different types of pattern, but right now I want to create a circular pattern. So I'm going to select circular pattern. Um, I want my pattern to be with a body, specifically this one. So that's what it's asking me. What object do you want to create a pattern out of? I want to make a pattern out of my torus. Um, what axis do you want it to revolve around? Because we are doing a circular pattern. I would like it to be around this one. So now I can see I've started creating a pattern. It will automatically default and give you three bodies in a pattern, but I can up that if I want it to be a little more dense, which I do want it to be dense. So I'm going to go with uh, 14, 14 buttons. Okay. So that's my first kind of little ridge right there. Um, and there, you can see that each new torus now has created a new body. So this is one point when my combine tool is going to come into a, is going to become very useful. Um, I don't want all of those to be separate because it's a whole lot to keep track of. Um, as I went through doing this acorn, which were tinier little toruses, um, you can see I went up to 791 bodies. So if I didn't combine them as I went, I would have had 791 things in this column over here. Um, so I want to combine and I can combine by clicking on them all individually. I can also select them over here in my bodies folder. So if I hit my use my shift com command I could just choose them randomly but if I want to select a whole swath section I'm gonna wait I said that wrong if you want to select the a whole solid chunk I'm gonna use my shift command um, if I wanted to select randomly I'm going to use my command which may be different on Windows if you have Windows Okay, now I have them all selected. I can hit my combine. I would like to join them. Okay. So now I have them all into one section. Um, I'm gonna call that my top ridge. And I have to do the same basic process that I did for my point because I do not want all of this stuff hanging out in the bottom. I really only want this little top section. So I will use my combine feature again. Um, which thing do I want to change? That's my target body. I want to change this. And I want to use my acorn cap to do that. Um, I am not gonna choose join, I want to choose cut. So that way I will split this blue body into two pieces and then I can hide and get rid of that bottom chunk. Um, I want to keep my tool, which is my acorn cap, and hit OK. And then I will find that bottom half and hide it. And um, I usually try to create some type of word over here that lets me know that that is something like I do not need anymore. So either typing in like excess or hide um, so that I know what it is and that uh, I don't want it. Uh, again, I'm just going to hide it and not delete it. But Okay, so now that I've done that, I really am just going to create, like go through this whole process again and again and again to create all of those ridges. Um, one thing I think I actually did not mention to you last time, which I really should have, is my um, move. We talked about moving, but I did not talk about um, copying. So in this specific case right now, it's not super important because I'm using the pattern. Um, but if I wanted another one of these without like remaking that whole thing, um, when I'm in my move copy menu, I can select create copy right there and now I have duplicated it. So now I will have a new body. Okay, so that's about where I'm going to go ahead and stop on this acorn model. But if I were to finish it similarly to the one in the handout, I would continue that same process of 
creating a single torus and then making a circular pattern with it. Um, just continue it the whole way around the top of this um, acorn to create that texture the whole way around. Um, and actually, before I finish, I did want to briefly touch on um, making these functional. So if you're making a game piece, um, this is outlined in your handout, but if you're making a game piece, it should stand up by itself. So it should either sit on a flat surface or you could put a little skinny little box under here as like a platform for which it to stand on. Um, if it is a pendant, you should have one type of hoop, so like a torus or a pipe or a hole to in order to like connect a chain to. Um, I am going to just, I think torus is the easiest one. So build a torus right up here at the top. Um, your handout says in between three to eight millimeters, depending on what you think fits best in your design, but I wouldn't go smaller than three and bigger, like eight and larger is kind of big. So we're, I'm just gonna make that three. Whoops, there we go. Um, change my operation to oh, join. Sure, I could either make it a new body or I can join it. I'm just gonna go ahead and join it because I would eventually do that anyway. And it is in position lined up where I want it to go, so I can go ahead and join it. Don't really need to move it or adjust it. Um, ta da! There we are. So there's my acorn. Um, a couple of you guys mentioned how to know how big this is, so I didn't really tell you how to measure it. Um, we have a couple of options. The first is this inspect and measure tool. Um, it can be kind of tricky to use um, because I do need to be selecting like faces or edges. Um, so if possible, I'm gonna click uh, the very point of that point. But you can see I kind of, I think I missed it a little bit. Eh, that's fine. And then let's just do Choosing um, the surface of a torus is difficult, so I might just choose to right there, and that is 30 millimeters, um, plus this little torus was three, so I'm about at like 33, 34 millimeters. Um, so that 33, 34 millimeters is within the project guidelines. Um, your final project should be between 15 um, which is fairly small if you wanted like a little tiny pendant, um, 15 millimeters to 50 millimeters. So um, if you're having trouble getting the inspect to work, another option is um, a little bit more fast and dirty, I guess. Um, I can create a new body just to use as like a measuring tool. Um, so if I kind of snap to one view and draw just kind of draw a box right there um i can see that the total height right there is 33 millimeters so yeah just using kind of drawing a box to see what the measurements are is another good option for measuring that's probably a little bit simpler than inspecting um, a little bit less precise but we don't really need to know like fractions of millimeters so it's not really a big deal. Um, but I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. Um, yeah, if you, let me actually just turn off these two. Um, I did do a loft command if I can zoom. There we go. Um, just to show you, you what it would look like really quickly. So if I have two sections like this and I want to fill in the space in between them, I can use my loft and select this plane and then select this, I guess, profile technically. 
um, and it will fill in the space in between them. And like always, I can choose what type of operation I want to do, a join, a cut, a new body, um, hit OK. So that's kind of a good way to like fill in space. Um, there you have it. Um, good luck. Have fun. Make sure you read through these graded criteria and project specifications to make sure you are within the project guidelines. Um, like for example, two different types of primitives, at least 10 different bodies that you can combine into one, but you should at least have at some point 10 different ones. Um, and yeah, otherwise, again, read through all of those requirements. If you have questions, let me know um, and yeah. Enjoy.